what looks like a humdrum industrial waterway was actually the scene of the Battle of Brooklyn about 200 years ago. And you would have been surrounded by gunshots and cannon blasts and thousands of soldiers swarming all around you desperately trying to swim across these marshes to essentially run away to fight another day and to create the country that we know as, of a, as America today. But we're not even interested in these minor little details of politics and history. What we're interested fundamentally is what made life possible, the water. The Gowanus Canal in Brooklyn, New York, was declared a super fun site by the Environmental Protection Agency in 2012. The EPA promised to clean up the canal with a half a billion dollar budget. But the area is more than just home to one of the most polluted waterways in New York. It is also a neighborhood undergoing major changes. It is home to artists, industry, and some long-term residents. Fiora is interested about the cleanup of the canal as Edmund Deagle. And, uh, During the day, he's a city planner who makes maps, but at night, he's a citizen scientist. He's trying to make sure that the cleanup is done right. To do that, he created a group called CSI Gowanus. So we basically use the same techniques that a CSI agent would to solve a crime, because really what happened here in some ways was an environmental crime. And the body that we have lying on the um, carpet of the library is the Gowanus Canal. It's a dead water body. And if you're Sherlock Holmes walking into the room and you look around and you say, what are the clues that people missed? They're looking for natural sources of water. Identifying them could help the EPA because this water overwhelms the sewage system when it rains. That sewage then spills into the canal. They attach cheap cameras to big red balloons to identify water flows. No one disputes the source of contamination. Dozens of nearby tanneries, oil refineries, and other industrial plants have polluted the canal for more than 150 years. The main problem these days is sewage overflow that contains some of the same chemicals that Deagle says can be found underneath a kitchen sink. Think of the Guanus Canal as Ben and Jerry ice cream, vanilla chocolate swirls swirling together. So this is not really a homogeneous scientific surface. It's a mix of chemistry. And that's one of the things that citizen science mapping is trying to do is, as local residents, we're trying to better understand what parts of the canal are vanilla, what parts are chocolate. But think of the fresh springs coming in to the canal as the vanilla, the thing, uh, the flavor that's going to help clean the water. And think of the chocolate as a combined sewer overflow. And so really what we're like trying to do is find out those vanilla opportunities around the edge of the canal, whereby getting the streams out of the sewer system, we can make the canal a more flavorful place, not, God, I'm really pushing this metaphor, but it's, uh, it's actually, we want to make the canal swimmable. And While the EPA is interested in isolating toxic sludge at the end of the canal and containing it, Deagle wants parks next to the canal so people can have easy access to the water. What looked like a hellhole actually has scenic potential. So you think, this could be Venice. You laugh, you say the guy's out of his mind, but technically there is no reason why this could not be one of the prettiest spots in New York City. Mm -hmm. 